council member Myrtle Cole represents communities in southeastern San Diego. She joins us here this morning. Thank you so much for being here. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Okay, well, you know, first of all, I want to ask you about body cameras, the police body cameras, because I believe you provide some really good insight here. Uh, San Diego police officers are now using them. There's been a little bit of controversy because in some recent incidents, they have not been on. What is your take on this, being a former police officer for many years? Well, this is new for them, and we need to make sure that they their reflex, um, that they need to have them on when they get out of the vehicles, and they're not used to that. You know, we provided a thousand uh, officers with them, but they're just not used to wearing them. So they're being trained to make sure when they get out of their vehicles, it's turned on, and that's very important. So. I believe uh, Chief Sh Shelley Zimmerman is making sure that they get the proper training to make sure that it's a reflex. Once they get out of their vehicles, once they get on a call, those uh, cameras are turned on. Mm -hmm. and, and being a former police officer, how do you feel that those cameras are working out here in San Diego? I believe it's great. I think we were the, the city that led the nation in making sure that the, our officers were equipped with them. And we didn't have them at the time when I was a police officer many, many years ago. I think it helps the public as well as the police officers. Mm -hmm. And let's go ahead and talk about business in uh, southeastern San Diego, because I know you've been trying to attract more businesses. Last year I was at the groundbreaking for Walgreens and now it's up and running. The, yes, the drugstore is up and running. We had um, the ribbon cutting the beginning of the year and we needed that drugstore because we d did not have a drugstore uh, south of the 94. So that's our major drugstore, it's Walgreens and we're happy to have them, they're doing very well. And uh, we just want everyone to make sure that they uh, go to that drugstore because they don't have to go now go to National City or Lemon Grove to go to a drugstore. It's right in their community. And some look at it as, you know, it's just one store, but it's more than that for the people that live around there. It's more than that. You know, our spending power is $1.9 billion, but a billion dollars, over a billion dollars, goes outside of our district for uh, restaurants, grocery stores, drug stores. So we need to make sure that those dollars stays in our community. So that's why we have a Walgreens uh, that we just opened and we're bringing in more grocery stores, more restaurants. Matter of fact, we're hoping to bring a grocery store called ShopRite. It's out of Philadelphia. We're hoping to bring that here to our district and more restaurants so that we can spend our own dollars right in our own community. So ShopRite, I've never actually really uh, heard about that. Tell us a little bit more about it. Well, that's exciting. It's a uh, ShopRite is in Philadelphia. It's about 11 stores or so in Philadelphia. Matter of fact, Michelle Obama recommended ShopRite because it's really community oriented. Uh, they hire local, they're a union store, they pay great wages. And uh, we went to Philadelphia to see them, to talk to the owner. And we're hoping that Jeff Brown, who is the owner, brings that uh, shop right into our district so that we could have fresh produce. It, it's a be beautiful store. They make their own food. They make um, food right there where you can buy it and eat it right there, matter of fact. And they even had a lobster tank that uh, they had in one of the stores. And so those are the things that we need in our community. How long is the process to bring businesses like that into the community? Because I know that it's been a priority but we're still working on getting them actually here in San Diego. Well, it is a, pro a long process, but it's shorter now that we have a mayor that's working with us to bring incentives into the community, making sure that the developers know there's an incentive to come into the 4th Council District and working together to bring those um, companies into our district because now they know our, our spending power. They didn't know our spending power before, so they were not eager to come into our district. They know our spending power. They know that we can spend money and we will spend money in our own district. And so we're uh, having developers to come in and uh, they're eager to do that. We just need to make sure that we stay with them, that we give them incentives to build. We have uh, some developers wanting to do a uh, mixed use on Hilltop, right at 94 in Euclid. Mm -hmm. So we're making sure that that happens and that hopefully will come on board real soon uh, so that we can have affordable housing and mixed use where we could have restaurants, retail, uh, right there, right off the 94 freeway. So people driving on the freeway can just stop into our district and spend their dollars in our district.
convenient. It's very right, convenient. Right. right, absolutely. Uh, let's talk about some other resources for your constituents, uh, such as the library. We have that. What else do we have coming well, in? Well, we just uh, broke ground on a 15,000 square foot library, Skyline Hills Library. Mm -hmm. It costs over $13 million. It's going to be a state-of-the-art library. We broke ground last month, and so we're eager to uh, have that open the fall of 2016, matter of fact. That was something that was um, done back in 20, I believe 2002 by uh, the late council member Charles Lewis set aside some money back in 2002. That's how long that's taken to um, get on board. So because of the economy is, is great, we, like I said, we have um, a, uh, the mayor who's wonderful and he's making sure that things are happening in our district. And so that has come on board in October. So we're looking forward to the fall of 2016 to open. Got it. And you know, you and I were talking a moment ago about um, improving also fire response in that area. So what do we have going on with that? Well, we just opened also an interim fire station on Skyline in Sycar. Mm -hmm. And that was done in August of this year. And that's a the regular fire station uh, with a squad, a full squad. So that helps the response in that area. We also have a fast response squad that has been operating since July of 2014 on, in Encanto mm -hmm. because we had three areas that had slow response times in my district, which is not acceptable. So they did a pilot program called Fast uh, Response Squad mm -hmm. on 61st and uh, Imperial, and it's working out well. The response times are now uh, have increased. It's from seven minutes now to five minutes. So we are really happy about that, that the response squad times have improved mm -hmm. and people who are in need and have an emergency, they get the fast response that they deserve. Mm -hmm. And let's uh, lastly talk about the chargers here because you actually voted for the EIR. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, I did. spending more than a couple million dollars. Some people that we have talked to aren't too happy about that money, especially now that the chargers uh, have obviously expressed interest to move to LA. So, where do you stand on, on all of that? Well, um, hot off the press. The mayor is going to New York, I think, next week to talk to the NFL. That's not a, you know, that's not off the table yet. Mm -hmm. uh, they have a lot of people that want the the team here. They have a lot of loyal fans, and so the mayor went to, is going to New York to talk to the NFL to make sure that, you know, we still have a chance to keep the team here. I believe that we need a new, um, we need a new stadium. Period. Our stadium is really old. Whatever team is here we need a new stadium and so that just helped to um, build that stadium the EIR to me I voted for it I would do it again to make sure that the loyal fans that really want the a team here gets their, a team here whether it's the Chargers and we're hoping that the Chargers will stay here or another team but we deserve a great NFL team here in San Diego Got it. Now, anything I miss that you feel is important to add uh, for people within your district that you want them to know that's coming up? Well, we're continuing to bring uh, resources here into the district and services here into the district because it's been an underserved district far too long, and that has to stop. We deserve better. We need all the resources and all the services the other districts get, so we're working on building, uh, bringing uh, manufacturing uh, business here mm -hmm. and working with Jacob Center is really great because we're a great team. They see our vision. We share the vision of bringing resources and businesses and restaurants uh, to this district because the people deserve it. They need it. And not just bringing those resources, but that will bring jobs into this district, which is, is so needed in this, in this time and age. Uh, we need our youth working. We need people yeah. working. Absolutely. Well, council member, thank you so much for being here this morning. I really appreciate your time. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Well, I'm Melissa Masiha with this week's San Diego Newsmakers. I'll be back next week.